Hey guys, it's Aaron, and I saw a couple posts on our forum go by talking about creating lighting cones. If you remember, uh, it was a, a while ago, maybe it was a year ago, I made a video on using transparent imagery to emulate like uh, lighting, basically. Not rendering, we're not talking about rendering, we don't render in here. This is just talking about representing light inside of your model, so like a working representation. So uh, I thought this lighting cone thing was really cool. So I went through and kind of developed that workflow. A little bit. Now, I'm not taking away from whoever posted it originally, um, but I have a couple tips on if you do want to emulate a light cone inside of SketchUp. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have this little stage here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these spotlights right here just to, right now they're just pointing straight down. So I'm just gonna have a, cone of light <laughs> just come right out of them straight down so uh, one thing i did grab i actually just downloaded it uh, which is a white to clear gradient image so i have that on my desktop i'm going to import that but other than that i'm just going to come in and, and do this thing so uh i'm going to go into one of these lights i'm just going to double click um i am going to go up here and go to view component edit and hide similar components. So as I do this to one, it's gonna do it to all of them, but I only wanna see one of them. I only wanna work in one of these. All right, so I need two things right now. One is I need the cone of light that to come down out of the, the light here. And then I'm gonna need a rectangular surface behind the cone that is at least as big as the cone. So let's see, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna come up and grab a point right here in the middle. This doesn't have to be perfect. I can adjust it afterwards. Uh, but I'm going to come draw a line like this, uh, draw a line over, and then back up there, just that triangle right there. Perfect. Now I'm going to put in a circle. So right below that, just going to drop a circle. I'm just dropping it straight down from this point. It doesn't have to actually connect up. Doesn't doesn't matter. I'm going to select it, tools, and say follow me, and then click my triangle. And that's going to create that going around like that. Okay, perfect. I'm going to delete that circle. I'm actually going to delete this too. I don't need that face right there. All right. Um, so that's coming. I actually want that to be up in there. So I'm going to triple click that real quick. And I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it vertically. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow on the keyboard. Tell it to move vertically. And uh, something like a slide it inside there till it's looks like it's coming out. Looks like the light coming out of there. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to come back here. And I'm just going to inference off of this line. I'm going to come over like that, like that. Um, oop, I did not inference off there very well, did I? Have inference vertically. I want to inference off of there, there off the green axis. And now this does not have to be perfect, but I want to draw a rectangle that is bigger than the cone I created. Again, not exact, but enough to cover it up, right? So it's it's wider and it's taller than this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a projected texture of my, my semi-transparent image right here. And I'm going to project it right on here. So by starting with a surface that's bigger, it just makes it so much easier. You can do this with a smaller uh, image, but getting that projected texture onto larger surfaces takes a lot of tweaking. So this is the easiest way I've found to do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to File import and i'm going to grab my linear gradient import that and i'm going to so you can see it here as it floats it goes down to nothing but at the top it's it's full white so i'm going to drop it here in this corner like this click there and i'm going to pull it up all the way to here and then that's going to put it on that there we go look at that whoops i i clicked out um that's that's what we're looking for so it's pure white here, drops down to see-through at the end. What I'm gonna do right now is select this, right-click, texture, and make it projected. Now, here's a simple part. I'm gonna to go to my paint bucket. I'm going to hold on my modifier key to sample, and then just paint it on the cone. Look at that, look how simple that was. Now, obviously some things aren't perfect right now. One, I got this rectangle floating behind. At this point, I can get rid of it. Because it's part of the model, I don't have to hold on to that surface. The other thing is I got this ring down here on the bottom. Not awesome, so I'm just going to actually shift, erase, and drag it around like this. 
Um, sometimes that's a pain, right? Sometimes holding down shift and deleting a circle that's broken like that, I'm not sure what happened to break it, but that can be difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, grab all the pieces that are left rather than dragging and getting rid of all of them. I'm just gonna select them, go to entity info and turn off their visibility. Same as deleting it. Okay, and if I click out now, I come out here, I got some lights coming out of there. So you can see it's similar to what we did with the image. Remember, we made a face me image before of a beam of light basically and shoved it up into a, a light. Very similar, but this can actually, uh, well, it's 3D for one thing, um, and it can actually be uh, seen from different sides. You can see the light will stack up too. So kind of a cool option if you want to create or emulate light falling, especially something like this on a stage where seeing how that light's gonna fall is going to be important. Pretty easy, create the cone, project the texture of a gradient onto the cone. All right, so I gotta to admit to you guys, I did fumble on this the first time I did it. Um, I started with a square that I imported my material to that was smaller than the actual size of the cone. And I figured oh, I'll just project it on there and then I'll stretch it and, and use, you know, adjust texture. It was rough. I don't recommend doing that. I do recommend, it seems almost overly simple, but like take that, make that rectangle, the reference rectangle for your projected material bigger than what you're projected on, put it on there, line it up, make sure it looks good, then bring it over. You don't, if you get really good at it, you can just do it off on the side, but man, lining it up like that made it very simple. Um, you can always readjust textures once they're put on any surface, but especially a cone, it can get kind of tricky and not easy and not very much fun. So this was a much simpler way to do it. Um, again, I know the, some, somebody in the comments going to already, I can already, I can feel it. So it's coming. You know, why don't you just take it into blah, blah, blah rendering software and make it a light and render it. That's awesome. If you're a renderer, go for it. The idea here is if you are doing something like this, like a stage design, and you need to see just where lights fall, is this enough? Is this going to be wide enough? That sort of thing. This actually gives you something physical to interact with rather than having to jump off to render every time you make a change. So by making it part of that light component, you can actually see where does it fall off. Uh, you could actually model that cone with a specific focus. Um, it's another way to see it before you jump off into rendering. If you're going to render out something with lights and everything, Go for it. Use a rendering engine. Rendering engine. If not, this is a way to represent that light without having to take that step. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos every single week and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Most, if not all of our content nowadays is derived from comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.